Hello and welcome here to The Daily Quest. My name is Solid Jake and this is episode number 27. Today is Friday. And what does that mean? That means we are doing an educast. Now, it also means that this is the final day of the Lunara launch week. So we are very much going to be focusing on Lunara once again, but this time taking a look at some of the viewer submitted replays featuring Lunara as a new hero. Now, pretty much any replay submitted this week probably had Lunara in it to begin with just because she is... Well, everyone's playing her. She's the new hero. She is that new shiny object that everyone wants a part of. Uh, as always, you guys can submit your replays at solidjakegg at gmail.com for future episodes of Educast. But today we have two selected, and I have not watched them. I know nothing about them, but I'm excited to see exactly what we're going to see. The first one submitted by D the Hunter. D the Hunter, a, a regular here um, within the channel. He's actually the statistician of the heroes community scene. And he's playing on Infernal Shrines as Lunara. He's got a Brightwing, a random Aleorc, and a Jaina on his team. And their opponents, actually a five stack, uh, are as follows. Let's get those, those audios up. Nice, nice. As soon as I start talking, the cat does summon herself, but we're going to ignore her for the moment. Their opponents, they've got Stitches, Karazim, Jaina, Leoric, Lunara. So both these teams, they're like... They're relatively normal, both running a, a single warrior, single support. I believe this was, in fact, a quick match, so matchmaking did a decent job making some good games here. Uh, actually, no, double warrior, Leorc stitches versus the lone Leorc. Um, Gazlo is, uh, he's kind of okay on, on this map, so we'll see how Gazlo actually works out. When, when it comes to setting up over these these uh, points, when, it, when you fight over the objectives, if Gazlo can get there early enough for those battles, he can become rather valuable in those situations. And these guys are rambling. It's a pre-made, so beware of rotations. Yeah, you can see that in the loading screen, you can actually see that all five of them had a yellow party logo next to their, their names. One of the nicest additions Blizzard has put into the game in quite a while. It's a very subtle difference that it makes, but it really lets you know what you're up against, who is playing together, so on and so forth. The Wisp just kind of goes uncontested through the entire map. Uh, that that Karazim had, had had no interest whatsoever of attacking the Wisp. And it just kind of makes its way up here to a nice point. Deep the Hunter using that for vision, but as it does expire, he should be throwing a new one out sooner than later. Looking at the talents here in this game, uh, we can see that D the Hunter is going for Cruel Spore. So he very well might be following the, the build that we did in... Our daily quest, episode number 26, the, the build that I discussed with Arthalon. Nice rotation from Jaina, a lot of damage going out, but the Radiant Dash from Karazim getting there for the, the heals. Now this Karazim is in fact going Transcendent, so it's a full support style. Sometimes we do see Iron Fist picked up, especially uh, recently we've seen that pick up popularity in some events now that they've improved it. Every third attack does 125% additional damage, that's a big crit. And with specific styles, especially when uh, you're using all your cooldowns, you can do a lot of damage to the hook there to confirm the kill onto Gazlo. Nice rotation here by the red team. That's going to deny a lot of experience here in the bottom lane, especially as we're about to go into the first shrine phase. Shrine will be active in just about three seconds in the middle of the map. Gazlo will not be able to set down those turrets like we talked about at the start of the show. Gazlo is really a hero that wants to try to get to the objectives early. He wants to lay down as many turrets as possible, kind of get that fortification set, because doing that in the middle of a fight isn't really all the most efficient thing in the world, and it's one of the bigger weaknesses. A lot of people would say that he's the weakest hero in the game as a result. All right, well, the Shrine's active. Gaz is charging his laser. He's going to try to hit a bunch of minions with it. Does get one kill, but not a ton done with that. Lunara brawling in the top. They get the kill on Jaina, so not able to save his allies. Stitches and Jaina just doing too much from the red team. And D the Hunter's fall on retreat. One more Frostbolt would do it. And this guy decides to try to hearth right in the, the range of the tower. Not really working out for him. He has no mana, very little health. Going to try to back up, potentially tap the well. Looking back down at the fight, Brightwing phase shifting forward to get the peekaboo showing exactly what's going on. D the Hunter juking the hook of Jorm. Jorm in the front, uh, body blocking for the team the best he can. But in terms of the shrine, it's rather even. 15 to 15. Zyax getting super low himself will end up falling, but the Blizzard crashing down on Divine Rapier. Uh, that's a lot of damage that he took there. Jaina trying to flank. Frostbolt misses on stitches and the huge eat there, the bite. Keeping him nice and topped off. Once again, Peekaboo revealing a lot of the enemy team. And we do see the Hunter take out the enemy team, Lunara. So a nice trade there. 
We see Garbles, our garbage Gaslow in the front, trying to push this team back, and he does successfully, but Leoric on the red team this time, not so lucky. So a lot of trades happening, two, three for two in favor of the red team, but the blue team, they took more, more kills back to back, so they've solidified themselves a nice position over the shrine, and they get themselves the first John Cena of the game. Da, 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 da. All right. Gazzo immediately rotating back to the bottom lane to maintain that soak. We see D the Hunter up here in the top. The phase shift will uh, give D the Hunter the heals that he needs, but he probably should just go back at this point. He's so low on mana, so low on health. Just let Brightwing soak this lane and go back to base, get back to full power, and try to make something happen on the map. Yes, Brightwing will heal you nicely, but I'm not sure what his well timer is yet. He's saying, you know what? I I've had enough of this. Gonna go get my mana restored. A nice call. We see Scare getting hit by the slam. The hook comes out, connecting on Jaina, walking in the most predictable path possible. The Blizzard trying to peel, but it will not be enough as that was a four-man rotation versus primarily just Jaina. Gazlo did see that gank just happen, so he's going to want to back up from this. And we see two members opting to chase Leoric. That's pretty much uh, a very difficult thing to do. And I want to be a little bit critical on uh, this rotation that we see right here. So before we even talk about the fact that Gazlo did get blown up, he overstayed his welcome, let's talk about the situation for everyone on the map in this, uh, this one moment. This is when we just saw Jaina die. This rotation killed Jaina. This is Leoric. Leoric can get away from almost anything. He's probably one of the slipperiest heroes in the entire game. He can just leave, right? He can go back and soak his lane as he should. Gazlo should just fall back. Uh, you know, he's been sieging this wall up. There's there's four members right here. They could rotate down and blow him up very easily. I mean, one Frostbolt's going to slow him. Yeah, Hook probably still on cooldown, but it doesn't matter. Lunara has a slow as well. There's a lot of things to do to just kill him. Hard to kill Leoric. So red team, their priority should be kill Gazlo. Gazlo's priority should be back up. Leoric's priority should be soak this lane and Brightwing should just be thinking well I've got this top lane soaking for my team let's keep doing that but what we actually end up seeing is Brightwing set is watching the minimap which is I can give props to you there but does think that she has to help Leor definitely didn't need the help here now she's abandoned the top lane they're gonna miss some experience from this so Lunara will make D the hunter will make his way up there but he had just hearth back to base to refill his bit excuse me <coughs> To refill his mana, whoo! And uh, in the bottom, Gaslo just overstayed his welcome a little bit too much, and he won't be able to get away from this Jaina. Frostbolt, Kona Cold, and Venom. Oh my, good night, Gaslo. Leoric, Brightwing, more than safe in the mid lane, but they did lose a lot of experience here from this top lane, and now D the Hunter well, will be here to push it back. So, you know, just a lot of small things that, w that kind of took a small lead they had, and push that away. They, they lost their losing experience in bottom now. We see Jane, Jaina is making her way down there to soak that, which is good. Gazlo, uh, just now respawning, will make his way back onto the map. And they need to start looking for some mercenary camps before the next shrine spawns. Gazlo is a hero that excels in the jungle. He excels at picking up mercenaries. So grabbing this Khazra camp, grabbing this Khazra camp, uh, or maybe even potentially going for Fallen Shaman, they're all fine options right now. Uh, personally, I like the Fallen Shaman camp. The last shrine was in the middle, so we don't know if the next one's going to be top or bottom. But we will find out pretty soon. The damage going out. A hook onto Gazlo. Garbles gets pulled in. The turret just trying to solo these Khazra will not be successful in doing so. And the wave has been pushed out. Three members down here in the bottom lane for our brew team. Three for the red team as well. Now Leoric rotating down beautifully. Skeletal swing connecting with that Drain Hope on Loken in the back. But the heals from Karazim are plentiful. Arcane Flare in the center connects. And then one hit from Leoric. And they get a kill on Stitches. A nice pickup. Mid lane, they do need to get back there for the soak. So they haven't lost any minions that Leoric gets there in time. Beautiful rotation by the blue team as a whole. D the Hunter has been holding the top lane successfully versus this Leoric. When Drain Hope is on you, just run. Just run. Don't even try to battle him. You just want to get out of the range of that 20% additional uh, movement speed that Lunara has. Just get away from it because not only are you taking damage, but he's healing. And you and you never really want to, to, to let Drain Hope get its full duration ever. Like, that is always a bad situation. They managed to grab this Khazra camp. This is a huge deal that is split push in the bottom lane. Great for the blue team they're head in xp after that last kill they got on stitches and the drain hope wars commence drain hope on from spalter on zyax d the hunter getting very low but the heels of brightwing should be able to keep her alive phase shifting forward not there in time so d the hunter does end up going down but stitches is traded out actually stitches and lunar so lunar is both down two for one in favor of the blue team forcing them back. And remember, this Khazra camp is just shredding through this wall. One tower already down. They outrange everything. And they're in such a good position from that bottom little corner where they're really not getting the brunt of any of the damage in this lane. Top top lane, we do see the, the currently it's 20 kills almost just about here. 
That's two full spawn phases from the minions, and Brightwing just kind of standing there. Um, I, I mean, Brightwing didn't get stunned, just kind of trying to go toe to toe with two members. Not really going to generally work out. You just want to try to run away, use Pixie Dust to escape if you can. Garbles walks way too far forward, had some decent turret positioning in that fight, but does end up dying. Lunara is very low, the poison taking away. Leor trying to escape. Brightwing will be up in one second, needs the face shift immediately. Brightwing. There you are. All right, going on to Jaina, we see the peekaboo being activated, and it is still an advantageous position for the blue team over this fight here on the top shrine. The hunter dodges the frostbolt, gets out of the blizzard. Zayax on Jorm, and Jorm is getting very low. The drain hope should be enough for the kill, unless we see those big heals. A, a snap call to use that uh, divine palm not working out, and Spalter ends up being shifted to, and then he dies. One more hit from Leo, not going to be there to get the carry's aim. He has the self heals, and Stitch is going too far forward. Should end up falling here. No, the peel, the skeletal swing um, coming out, but still not quite connecting. All right, the minions just 11 more needed. Still a bit of a lead here for a blue team, but it's no by no means a win quite yet. Blink heal, the gravel bomb connecting, but no follow up. The blizzard had been used to the side. D the hunter hit by the entomb in a bit of a weird spot, but the polymorph making enough time for D the hunter to be able to get out of there. But Brightwing is not so lucky. Both of the Lunars are incredibly weak. Only two more skulls are needed. Jaina flanking up, casting blizzard, the longest cooldown, the most valuable cooldown just to get the two kills, but it looks like it's the risk will end up paying off and that is going to be a successful punisher here picked up john cena diving towards the top lane with a single goat boy still alive down here in the bottom lunar or excuse me leor just died here in the top as well john cena successful in getting that bounty but this has been such a big part of the story here. We now have almost a level lead for the blue team. This Punisher is going to do a lot of damage. Stitches just taking the brunt of it. Let's actually look at, take a look at this Punisher pushing in the top lane and talk a little bit about how you respond to a Punisher that the enemy team has picked up. So here you are. Uh, you've spent most of your heroics as the red team. You you, only, you have some Thord Wound Vine stacks ready. Maybe you have... Well, you have one. You have one charge of Thorn and Vine, and you almost have Divine Palm again. So you don't really have a lot of massive power for a team fight. Um, you're standing in front of your wall with two members right now, but this is already an unnecessary risk. You're not looking for a team fight. You're looking to clean up this Punisher as efficiently as possible. Well, John Cena only sees blood. This guy has the the ultimate thirst to kill everything in his sight, and he will always dive at a hero. Well. Uh, what you should do is you should always, 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 always position yourself behind a wall in the situation you have a wall because then he will dive in. The moment the Punisher dives in, you go from fighting it here where maybe one tower is hitting it. This tower is just out of range, I think, um, to actually hit this Punisher. And then you have five structures shooting it. So you'll be getting this one, this one, this one, and this one. That's four. Good job, Jake. Um, you'll have four structures shooting the Punisher if you stand right about here. And that is really what you should be doing. Not only is it much safer for where you're standing in that moment, uh, but it's, it's going to help eliminate the Punisher much more efficiently. So they're standing in the right spot now, but now they're pushing forward. Just kind of let him jump in there. You know that he's, he jumps pretty early in the fight. Jorm just wants to get in there real bad. And now Jorm's on the wrong side of this this fight. He gets hit by, by the explosions. The polymorph goes off. John Cena's just wailing away at him. And it's just been a very, a very sloppy initiation so far. They really want to bait him back to a point where the, the blue team can't fight as efficiently. So in the end, they clean it up after only losing a couple towers. Gaslo gets blown blown up somewhere, somehow, some way. Where is your body? Um, I, I missed that action. That's okay. But that could have been done a lot more efficiently. It, also, during all of that fight, they probably should have sent uh, someone down here to push this lane back out. I mean, the Khazra camp was, was very effective. This goat boy has been alive for roughly 1,400 years. Uh, this guy is older than any history book you've ever read. He has just gotten that max value. I don't know how he still has more spears in that quiver. Like, this is the... the it's like a Harry Potter sack. It, you can put a full house inside a tent. You can store all, a whole library in that bag. I, I don't even know what's happening, but he has a lot of spears and there's just been throwing them out for days. Polly goes down from Brightwing, but not quite enough for the kill. Karazim has the big kills. Ring of Frost decimates our Brightwing player and score. Scare. He is scared. The Envenom, the Radiant Dash, the damage is sufficient for the kill, but Conjurer uh, will die to the water alley. Gaslow charging his laser, shooting it wildly into the darkness, not finding anything with his laser beam that time, and Leoric is going forward. Skeletal swing on 
Loken, not going to be enough for any kills here. Raid, oh, we do see Divine Palm used once again unsuccessfully here in the top. And D the Hunter going in for the kill. The poison damage not going to be enough, realizing it's too much of a risk to dive in there with Leor. And of course, a keep uh, to boot in that position. So he does back away safely. Brightwing just kind of using a uh, phase shift on anyone that he likes just to, to get back from from uh, the, the base, it's perfectly fine to do that. You don't need that. It's a, it's a short enough cooldown, especially when you're specking into the full phase shift ability. Hyper shift reduces that cooldown by two seconds every time you pulse on an ally. And if your team is clumped up, that cooldown is negligible. Okay. A little brawl up here. Uh, I, I do want to be critical of that. Um, just polymorph is like a really good ability, but it's a 15 second cooldown. And I'm not sure if there was a, a, a real a real benefit to, to polymorphing right there. Uh, when, you, when you're a support player, you need to think of abilities like Hammer of Justice, uh, polymorph, as like either saving someone or making a big play. And when you when you look at the enemy team, like if if, if Stitches had 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 dove in and he and he's he's gonna gorge your ally. You could polymorph them right before he gorges. And that can that can give your Lunara or Gazla or Jane or whoever that might be in a bad spot a, a lot of time to get out of those situations. And the, the shrines are about to spawn, so you wanna be a little bit more I mean, don't be using polymorph for damage. It's not a damage ability. It's it's a utility ability. Wow, that was a beautiful Thornwood Vine going out from D the Hunter. He's getting a lot of kills on the minions. Brightwing does have those big pulse heals, but we do see the front line. The Entomb going down. Gravel Bomb to disengage. Beautifully done. Jaina following up with the Water Alley. The Polymorph was used beautifully. They're stopping Stitches from being able to get away or self-heal at all. And they pick up four kills. What a ridiculous fight by the blue team. Conjurar will end up falling to the Water Alley, trying to bound and bounce away, but will be unsuccessful in doing so. And this will be the third John Cena of the game for our blue team. Now, this one's going to go down the bottom lane. We see the double wisp spreading out here. Lunara going for the dividing wisp. He's got wild vigor. This is a, a very similar build uh, to the one that we, that we did the only difference being the Wisp, and Wisp is definitely a stylistic thing. If some people want to have, it's four, four Wisp talents at that tier, so if you want to have more Wisps, go for it. Because right now, he's got wards up here in the top, he's got wards in the middle, and it's honestly, you know, a very powerful talent as well. Okay, the Gorge there, and Gazla, that will be lights out for him. There's no saving him. Just kind of deal with the fact that he is going to die. Still pushing the best you can. In a situation like this, you, you you could say, all right, we have this 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 fifth or sixth member, John Cena, pushing down the bottom lane with us. Well, we should really do everything we can to push down this lane. And to an extent, you're right. But what I would actually like to see here is I would like to see one member of this team maybe not push down this lane, and then just some safer poke behind John Cena. Because for the enemy team to dive past John Cena, it's pretty risky. And you can really put your team in a better position if you say... Just take D the Hunter, or probably not Brightwing, because you need to have heals down here. You need that that utility. Or, or Jaina, take one of your assassins and put them in the mid lane, and just have them push this out. And this is going to give your team so much more additional experience in these scenarios, because at the end of the day, the most you're going to do with your Punisher is take out a couple a couple towers, right? That is that is the most you could ever hope for, and that's 1,300 experience. It, it's very nice. Oh my goodness, Divine Palm, once again, not going to be effective. So they got both these towers, but at this point... Why, why stay? Like the hook pulls and scare. This is a scary situation. Uh, with nice ice block denying the entomb the damage that it really wants, but this is still a full on retreat scenario. And they, they overstayed their welcome. There's never, there's never a situation where you're going to reliably kill that keep. And the hook threat, I mean, it, they, they paid for it. They lost a hero. They're going to lose a second hero. Sure, they killed two in the process, but they could be doing like way more push elsewhere. While that John Cena is in the back, they could be grabbing mercenary camps right now to gain additional presence on the map in general, forcing the red team to continue playing on their back foot. If you can force your opponents to constantly just clean up mercenary camps, constantly be like responding to your actions, you're effectively just winning the game oh my goodness the damage output from d the hunter shredding through them right there conjurar i love that name uh in in, in the mid here wailing away at brightwing d the hunter needs to switch his focus he needs to switch conjurar so much damage going out from that uh, Lunara player, but the Drain Hope from Zyax is actually going to be successful in killing him. Red Team did successfully pick up the Mercenary Camp here in the bottom. D Hunter diving in, but the Hook pulls him back. Ring of Frost on Brightwing. Critical damage going out. The Polymorph buying a little bit of time uh, for Divine Rapier. 
but he needs to back on up and start healing his team. Zyax is caught in the Entomb. Wraith walking to safety the best of his ability, but that Drain Hope is shredding through his health bar. Wraith walk for his skeleton swing, too risky. Both those towers firing upon him. Trades for trades for trades, but Gazo is playing his own game. He's saying, look guys, I, I, I like the solo queue, and I also like the solo lane, and I don't like to play team games, so I'm just gonna go push this top lane. I could grab some mercenary camps, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna push the lane out. That's how Gazlo talks, guys, just so you know. All right, well, mid lane, uh, yeah, has been pushed out, and red team is all is sending all five up here to this top shrine. They have not managed to grab themselves a single shrine so far this game, and they need to do it. D the Hunter just now respawning. Jaina is a little bit late to the action. If they can find someone out of position with a nice hook, they could set themselves up for the perfect fight phase. Trying to clean up these towers is definitely the right call. Just push them out. Kanjurar just decides to step into enemy fire for no apparent reason. Hook on Scare, but there's no there's no follow-up. There's, there's no uh, real synergy with this team. D the Hunter does end up going down, though, from that beautiful Entomb. That time, they followed up with the Entomb. The Orc will end up getting Divine Palmed, but not gonna be get getting the revive. The hook there on Scare once again, and this time he's gorging, but the rest of the team is fighting other things. This Stitch is just... No one seems to care about what he wants to do because, well, this is... This is a pre-made. What? This is a pre-made. The, the cute is five. Help your stitches. Watch for the hooks, team. Uh, I, that's that's unacceptable. Well, Leoric does go down to the trades. One for one. Lunara down and Leoric down. Kanjurar does manage to dodge that Frostbolt and is getting away. But the beautiful march of the Black King chasing Loken back into a weird spot. The skeletal swing will pretty much secure the kill here. Wraith. Or Drain Hope used the last moment just, just because, not even needed after that auto attack, but just wants to get that insurance policy in check. And the blue team, they are turning things around here. They're actually turning this that looks like a second Punisher will be theirs, putting their focus. Blizzard just a zone while the rest of the team works on these final minions. And Gazlo successfully seals the deal with the, wrath, the, the last of the minions using his turrets. Punisher, third Punisher in a row here. For the blue team, we do see this bottom keep already exposed. The other keeps aren't so bad. I mean, yes, they, this one has taken a little bit of damage, but they, they just need to remember the rule. Fall back behind your wall. Fall back behind your wall. But now, now you got one warrior leaving, the other warrior trying to buy time for him. Both of them are practically dead, and they didn't need to take any of that damage. Now you have John Cena behind the wall. Focus him, focus him, focus him. Throw everything you have. The moment that you know that you don't have to worry about the end of team for a brief moment and burst him to the best of your ability. But we didn't even really see that in that scenario. And this Punisher is getting ridiculous value. The gravel bomb pulling Karazim in. John Cena diving over the keep to slam at Jorm. But it will fall into brittle little frosty pieces. And now we see the chain blizzards from the opposite Jane is going out. A huge ring of frost does manage to pick up a kill, but it's Jorm that's getting to get very low. He falls. Drain Hope from the Red Leoric does end up falling to D the Hunter regardless. And Kenjurar is the only rem member remaining here on the red team. Top keep ended up falling. Bottom keep still completely pushed out. These minions making through that bottom tower. So it's really just the keep, which is now under siege. And the blue team is looking to try to end the game. I mean, just better fights when it came to the Punishers throughout this game. We never really saw true follow-ups to the hooks. When you run Stitches, Stitches is a very different style warrior, especially if they're not going Putrid Bile. He's a warrior that doesn't excel in, in uh, peeling. He doesn't excel in being like a frontliner. He's, he's real. This style of Stitches is more about picking off. And he landed some really good hooks, but the team was never there or interested in respecting the fact that he was getting these hooks. And that really has cost the red team a lot in this game. They managed to push back the blue team. They've they've regained some control. We see a nice little wisp just dashing through the bottom here, and it, they're 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 gonna try to like you know even things out the best they can. Bottom keep just taking a little bit of damage, but the ammunition is quite low. So if they got a single mercenary camp down here that went uncontested, like those Khazar camp earlier in this game, that could be a keep going down in its own. And they also have to worry about the level 20 storm talent. So. Let's just talk about the build very quickly. If you haven't seen the Lunara Breakdown Daily Quest where I give you guys the build, this is this is pretty much it. You should watch the video. It's episode number 26. Just find it on the YouTube. But 
uh, I mean, this this style of play, it, it's got amazing lane clear, it, and it's got great great burst potential with auto attacks. I mean, unfair advantage paired with Starwood Spear and Wild Vigor. Every time you pop your W, every time you use the spores, Lunara just starts shredding, and she's been doing great damage all game long, sitting at 78,000 damage versus 62,000, still top of their team. This Lunara is going a bit of a different build. This is the, 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 the natural perspective. Nature's Toxin reveals enemies. There's no stealthies. There's, there's no stealthies. Like, what? I mean, probably very good talent if you're facing a Zeratul or a Nova. It's good for chasing people through bushes and stuff. But I don't know. I don't really see the synergy there. Nimble Wisp, it's a big battleground. I can see the merit for that. Uh, Nature's Calling, this is just phenomenal for... Um, you, you do bonus damage to minions, mercenaries, tower structures. But it doesn't work against the actual shrine minions. So when you're fighting over the objective, you do not get that 200% damage. A lot of people don't realize this, but they actually... Originally in this map, that's how it worked. But it no longer works that way. No talents affect damage done to those sorts of minions so this it's a fine talent because nature's calling paired with this um, but then pestering blossom so increase blossom range why not get the blossom width if you're going to go for the range get the width just do a blossom build and then starward spear there's there's no real cohesion in this enemy uh, lunaris build there's it's just kind of like i'm gonna get talents and these talents are gonna be nice but i don't i don't see a theme anywhere um okay well can you rar just scouting out this merc camp saying, yeah, we should do this. Yeah, we got four people here. We can definitely do it. I have nature's calling. I shred these mercs like nothing. And they will be successful in picking this up. Now, Stitches did not go for fishing hook. He's He went for pulverize. So he's, he's opting to have a little bit more uh, control in these fights. But he's, he's still getting the hook, so it's fine. Uh, and the team's not respecting hooks anyway, so I don't blame him for not going for fishing hook. Uh, but the thing they have to worry about is they need to find better clear on these minions. Right now, I mean, as soon as it starts, they're, 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 uh, they're so far behind immediately. Gorge onto the Gazzle, but where's the follow-up? Kajurar just leaves! They just gorge this member and pull him out of the way, and Kajurar just decides to chase the, the Hunter. Uh, so will they even get the kill on Gazlo? No, they had a beautiful uh, situation to try to get the kill, but they're just too split up. They're, 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 they're all over the place. Divine Rapier fighting back this Water Ellie with Loken, and they're fighting back, but the team is pushing forward while the team is so split. Oh, it's a tragedy. The blue team just pulling them apart. Three of them have already fallen. There is another John Cena. <laughs> what? I can't even talk anymore. I'm just going to start coughing instead of casting. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's probably going to be game. Catapults and Fallen Shaman marching down the top lane. We've got two catapults. Make that three. The Fallen Shaman will keep summoning little dojis. Never mind. He died. Good job, Loken. But this bottom lane is in a tight spot. The fortifications have all expired just a little well. That Brightwing is going to spit on a little bit. Look at the split. And then John Cena diving into Vine Rapier. He can use Radiant Dash on an ally. He's going to look to do that. Always looking for the Mega Jukes. Doesn't even want to do it. Going to tap the well. Go ring around the rosy. But the keep is, or the core is being completely sieged up. We do see Leoric falling. Loken is trying to kite this dude, but the rest of the blue team is focused on that core. G! G! Yeah. Oh. Nice. D the Hunter, well played, my friend. Topping out the damage with the Arthalon build. You make us proud, dude. You make us proud. Look at that. Look at that. 90,000 damage, making everyone else look like a chump. The true build is here, my friends. And, of course, the Wisp talent is, is, is always flexible. The Wisp talent is a lot of the times down to preference. I like the one where you can have Wisps out pretty much at all times. Um, I think it's probably the... The one that was here most frequently in competitive, but that was that was uh, that was Educast, boys. That was Educast uh, game one. But we got two. We've got two lined up today. Uh, Lunara has 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 many different styles that you can play her, but I'm I'm curious if we're gonna see the same style in this game. Um, now, when I say many different styles, uh, there is a different there's a Q build that some some players in the competitive scene are arguing is better than this one. Um, but I think a lot of people agree that it's at the end of the day, it's probably stylistic. So we'll see what build we end up getting for the second game. 
We've got uh, we've got two teams duking it out here, and we've got a full oh, oh, four four stack two four stack versus four stack actually. Darth Cadis, also known as Elsana, will be our Lunara this time around on the red side. Their opponents over here on the blue team. It looks like we've got uh, well, even though it says it says red now because this game likes to mess with my head. Um, it's gonna be Jaina, Murky, Karazim, Johanna, and Lunara. And on the red side, even though it shows them as blue here, Blizzard, uh, and then it says blue and red. God, could you could you be consistent for once, game? Um, we we have we have Taronda, Kerrigan, Asmodan, Sylvanas, and Diablo. So both teams have a warrior. Both teams have a support. Both teams have a specialist, and then both teams have two assassins. Difference being is we have Kerrigan as a melee assassin. Kerrigan is very good at rotating on this map in general, and we have a sugar plum. Wait, is this the wrong, wrong, wrong? Oh, this is the opponent team is Lunara. So Darth Cadis isn't even playing as Lunara in this. This is the mix up. She's submitting a replay where she is Sugar Plum Sylvanas. I just, I saw, Lun I saw Lunara in the title of the email and I'm like, we're going in. All right, so we get, we get to watch the build here of Idol What I Want. I do what I want. I do what I want. I do what I want. What do you do? You pick up Cruel Spores. Such a smart Lunara. Baiting Wu-Tang Clan back to your tower to take a ton of damage and throwing spears left and right, but don't go too close. Yeah, nice. Smart, intelligent, backing away, prancing, frolicking, whatever you want to call it. Any kind of movement is sufficient because she is a Bambi. Kerrigan waiting in the shadows. If, if I, I do what I want, does what she wants, she will get blown up. Oh, combos, but the flips to almost safety. That was interesting. I do what I want is now dead. But the rotation was successful here from Kerrigan. Lunara maintaining the soak here in the bottom. And this is a, a beautiful situation. She can rotate to Diablo, who has stuns, or to Lunara, or excuse me, Taronda, who has stuns and lockdown. Murky just throwing his life away as often as humanly possible, nearly killing Darth Cadis here in the top lane. And right now, uh, we're going to see the Ravage over the wall. Flex, bro, flex in his bro muscles. And getting the kill, Augustus throwing those heels over over the bushes and to keep that Kerrigan nice, safe, and happy. And right now it's Johanna trying to duel uh, against Kerrigan and Taronda. Now this is this is a risky thing to do. Uh, if if Hunter's Mark is applied to you and you get hit by a full uh, stun combo, you're probably going to lose your life and you're down a level. So level four has been picked up. Darth Kate is going for in Venom. Uh, healing Ward, so it's more of a supporty style um, Taronda. Sometimes we see Protective Shield, sometimes we see Healing Ward, and sometimes we see Pierce at this tier. It's going to be Healing Ward right now, and a red team, or blue team, whatever the left side is, needs to get level 4 uh, pretty soon. They're not too far off, double uh, specialist here in the top lane, doing a good job uh, pushing, pushing this lane back. They've been killing Murky left and right, and he does give experience when he dies, not a full level. Ooh, Skybound Wisp. So this is kind of like having a clairvoyance when your Wisp does end up dying. Wow! Was that Haunting Wave Christmassy? Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my goodness, that skin is kawaii. But Darth Cadius is gonna die. Esports? Esports. All right. Fekwin. Faken? Backlin. Oh, Shadow Charge, Flip, Aruni, Dooney, Blizzard doing a lot of damage. Diablo decides to stand in it and tank the damage, but the tapping of the well has, the fountain has allowed him to sustain through that. So successful kill for Laura Dibbles. Top lane, Asmodan just kind of being a zombie behind the wall, not really doing much. These AFK and attacking. Nice, there we go. Global Annihilation hitting one of the minions. Good try, good try. But Murky, Murky's gonna, gonna be able to throw that mine down, and he's just too afraid to step in it or, or destroy it. So, nice, nicely done. If you were esports enough, you could change the angles and then target it. Oh, oh, man, that's only esports people can do that, though. Uh, all right, Darth Cadis here in the top. Throwing out the dagger. The, oh, the Christmas haunting wave. Juking, Mur Murky's like, what do I do? What do I do? Do I contest it? Do I push? Looks like he is going to contest that top um, temple, shrine, altar, tribute, whatever it's called. Murky does end up dying again. He is just feeding all of his loyal Murky deaths. Let's do math. He has died 1.25 times. That means he's died five times. Little Merc. Did you go living the dream? I hope not. Okay, we wouldn't invent him. If he wasn't living the dream, I would be very critical of him. 
Mid lane losing a bit of soak right now, but Laura Diablo has made his way back. And we see that we got Augustus riding his little... I mean, Toronto would definitely drive a Vulture, right? Right? In every way, Toronto would drive a Vulture. What else would she drive? It's just it's just mad, thematic. Middle lane, we do see both of the Shrines are active here for the blue team. Murky gonna try to get in the dragon. Wu-Tang Clan says none of that, but as he shadow charges forward, he realizes I can't do this alone, but it's enough time bought because Zombie standing on this point, throwing out some little auto attacks. He's got a general minion bro walking down, but uh, it looks like he's about to be in a terrible, terrible, terrible spot. Uh, Murky throws down the puffer fish. Johanna with the condemn to pull him in, and now he's out of position. He does end up dying, and Diablo falls as well. But looks like Augustus and Flex, bro, are gonna try to flex their muscles and pull in Jaina. But no, doesn't actually land the combo properly, but the Sentinel is enough for the kill in the end. Bottom lane completely uncontested by both sides. These minions just kind of dueling it out. Boop, 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 boop. And top lane, Johanna waiting in the bush to see if Darth Cadus decides to cut, try to walk up there. Stepping on out, revealing his position, Darth Cadus knows that it's just time to play as safe as possible. And let's look at the talents here. So Un Unstable Poison and Venom with the wind. Um, with the wind, a, a you know, it really just gives you a lot of chase potential and a lot of safe poking. The 25% additional range is quite nice. Lunara did end up falling to something somewhere somehow. But Fall, Fall Rock, Johanna down here with Jaina is going to make things very difficult for Flexbro. Blizzard connecting with one point. The healing ward thrown down early. Where is the heal to Ronda? The Lunar Flare. The heal comes out in the between the beautiful healing ward and that, that last heal coming out of Augustus. Kerrigan slips away and is able to tap the well. Both right, right now we see that both the shrines are controlled by the red team, but the bigger story is the fact that they're just about level 10. And when they do have that level 10 advantage, they can really look to abuse their opponents in the team fights to the best of their ability. Um, Murky is just going to keep holding this top lane pretty well, and there are those level 10 heroics. The blue team ca uh, catching up just moments after, but with the black pool, that globe hits very hard. Now, let's let's look let's look at uh, let's look at Asmodan. Now, if you're an Asmodan player, um, there, there's there's kind of like there's kind of two ways to play Asmodan. You can do a taste for blood build, where you you put your emphasis on um, and on stacking your your ability and making the Q as powerful as possible. Taste for Blood gets empowered two bonus damage every single time he kills a minion and it's permanent damage on the Q. And he's got 38 bonus damage, which is honestly really bad. Um, when you're playing Asmodan, you kind of always want to save your Globe of Annihilation for minions. And especially in the early game, you kind of need a, a second hero to help you weaken those minions, not kill them, and then throw the globe out to get the killing blow. And if they kill it like within a second after the globe hits, uh, you, you still get the point. It's like, count it, you know, it's like easy mode, right? Um, but I, I really just wanna like, just, just say in general, you probably should never try to do this build solo. Uh, queuing up solo as Asmodin without a, a, a buddy to help you soak stacks is, is very difficult. And I guess the second bit of advice is we just saw him spend Black Pool, one of his two charges. And this is, you know, it's a 20 second cooldown for each, for each charge. And then throw a globe at Murky. Don't do that. Save your cooldowns for minions every single time. It gets way easier to stack when you have Black Pool at level 10. You just throw the Black Pool underneath you and then you kill, uh, you, you use it on the wave. So let the wave take a little bit of damage, poke it down a little bit, and then throw the Black Pool. But dude, like, that's that's not what I want to see. I don't know, he's looking for the egg, I guess? Um, but not really the optimal way to be playing Diablo. Looks like Darth Cadus does go down on Sylvanas. And Diablo just kind of wiggling around, realizing that this is, you know, he's got a Nephilim that's that's contesting him, and he he doesn't really feel like fighting this Nephilim. Nephilim smell weird, uh, and Diablo's not into that right now. He's, oh, 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 maybe the Nephilim left? Nope, nope, Radiant Dash, Lunar Flare combos, where's the flip? Ring of Frost, not Ring of Loss, it is Ring of Frost today. Quirp is still alive though, Augustus coming up, the Sentinel needs to fly beautifully, but no, Divine Palm used and will be activated, uh, uh, rather, Odd fight that we're seeing. Shadow Charge Condemn pulling him back in. Now it's the red team in a terrible spot. The Blizzard just raining down. Augustus will end up falling also. So sure, they might control both the Shrines, but a very sloppy fight. And they lose to Ronda and Diablo, who did have enough souls to respawn. Looks like he just realized, I am alive. I can go back to fight. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, woohoo. And Murky has recaptured this top Shrine. Bobner Shrine being approached upon by Johanna. will be getting control in just a moment. And let's get an update on Lunara. So Lunara... 
went for Cruel Spores, uh, opt for the Skybound Wisp. That's going to just give you more vision, especially in like 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 burst vision in a way. And then Nature's call Culling. So going for Cruel Spores to be able to use W as often as possible. And then Nature's Calling. I could see this being really good at getting Mercenary Camps um, since you can spam the W uh, every two seconds, really. Uh, but I I'm curious to see how it will pan out. Also going for Leaping Strike. Now this, oh, just going to step in that Apocalypse. Not going to work out. Oh, leaping into battle with Johanna's Condemned. This time it looks going to work out. Nature's Calling is only bonus damage to minions. Oh, the Shadow Stock save from Taronda. And Diablo can tap the well. Big fat heels keeping him alive, and I heard uh, Divine Palm use somewhere, some way. Darth Cadis does get picked off by Murky. Uh, we do see a nice little annihilation connecting, but again, it's not really all that powerful. Only 50 bonus damage. Oop, that's a pause. Flex Bro pulling in the Merc, getting the kill, but not going to be able to kill Fall Rack before he falls himself. What? What? Oh! <laughs> the trades. And everyone was dead. Everyone is now dead. G. G. Okay, Corp. That's his name. Augustus. Honor Chopper. I do what I want. Is actually in the mood for capturing a shrine, so he's doing that. And, um, oh my goodness, the Octo Grab Gravo Wombo Combo Esports. Crazy eyes. Can he do it? Zombie is getting very low. The bubble, and then the Q, the slime. He does it. Murky gets the kill. That's why he has the Master Skin, because he is full Esports. But Elsana knows the bubble and cooldown and quickly shreds through Murky. Gonna try to stand out of the puppet fish. Nice. She does successfully do that. And she flaps her little fairy wings. Fairy Plum Princess galloping down to the lane where she will then start working. Working on blowing these minions up with unstable poison will clear that rather quickly. Asmodan still dead for 10 seconds, but there's a brawl happening in the mid lane, and Kerrigan needs to get that combo on Jaina. If you can pull her in, Diablo can shadow charge and then flip, and in theory, if you're esports enough, you can kill her very quickly, but we haven't seen a whole lot of that. Toronto now in the bottom is shooting a sentinel up to the mid lane, capturing this bottom shrine, so the shrines are just kind of trading between teams left and right, left and right, but Darth Cadis found getting leaped upon the... Oh my goodness! I do what I want, wants to be a jungle gym master, and says, I am that! So flies all over the place. Wu-Tang Clan gonna have to run from this blizzard raiding on Augustus. Tapping the well. It's always ready for Diablo, it seems. And he is just getting all those fat heals. Murky falling once again to Asmo here in the top, who is starting to get those stacks up a little bit better. He's gotten six in the last two minutes. Nice. That's three minions. Successfully killed with Globe Annihilation. Now sitting here on this top shrine. Gonna try to recapture that crazy eyes looking in here, but we'll find Flex Bro. There is now a cat on my chair. There's a cat on my chair. Yes, yes. Yes, she likes it when I make it hard for her to sit. All right, mid lane, we have Diablo and Taranda just kind of fighting a 2v3. Diablo is shadow charging forward, doesn't actually get the flip. So without the flip, you can't get the Lunar Flare. Without the Lunar Flare, you don't get the kills. And now it's a 4v3. All right, shadow charge forward, Octo Grab, Explosion, Murky, good night. But the Blizzard is doing a fair amount of damage. It looks like Tarana can successfully heal through that. She does have overflowing lead at this point, so that's much more heals available for the Taranda. She's a much more viable solo healer in the late game due to that talent alone flex bro getting hit by the condemned does end up falling the 3v2 in the top lane it's just the the poison from murky and then the poisons from lunara have pr proved to be very powerful versus the lone support of taronda all right crazy eyes just throwing down his crazy puffer fish he's sieging this up the best he can but uh, diablo shadow charging forward but again there's there's no follow-up it's just a lone shadow charge and then he like looks at other targets not really working out too well you need to get these pickoffs on lunara who's really excels at sieging you from afar star wars spare has been picked up that's going to be even further siege whoa, whoa, where's the flip like you have it just just a raw apocalypse Anyways, Condemned on Augustus. Shadowstalk has to be used. Trying to peel Lunar Flare, hitting nothing, and Augustus will end up falling to Murky. Murky dying is negligible compared to the kill that he just picked up himself. Haunting Wave forward. Lunara diving in, flipping over. I almost thought Diablo actually used Overcharge. Overpower. Use Overpower. Use it for once in your life, Diablo. You can do it. Oh, but Faken does get go the ice block at the last moment. Ravage four from Flex Bro, not even needed, gets the kill. Diablo falling to Murky, doesn't manage to survive just barely at the last moment. Karazim hasn't been here for all this action. I do what I want, wants to go home and get some heals. So he's going to do that right now. Sylvanas uh, in the front, just trying to push this lane up the best they can. This Murky has been here the entire game. 
One day, Asmodean will realize its location and successfully hit it with a Globe of Annihilation. I know he's been trying. I know he's been trying, but I don't know if he can do it right here, right now. Darth Cadis has to back away. The Merc damage is too much. Has to be wary of this combo that's going down right now. Onto Flex, bro, who just got flexed into his grave. And Lunara is flip-flopping over, making the flashiest esports plays we have ever seen. Star Wars Spear not enough as Tarana comes in to win the heals and the well is able to be tapped. Good attempt by Lunara, spinning both the charges now. Now, when you go for the Leaping Strike, it's a 20 second cooldown per charge. We have two charges, so not going to be ready for a while. Just a, a globe that, again, is not hitting any minions, and he's sitting at 70 stacks. That's it's really, really poor. You need to empower that as often as possible and make yourself a, a nuke machine. Uh, without the nukes, then they're going to get the dukes. All right, Darth Cadis, Diablo, both entering the top of the map. The globe going out this time, almost killing some minions. Nice. I think we got some stacks there. This is good. Shadow charge forward, but again, overpower is actually used. Uh, uh, and then Apocalypse hit hit two targets. All right, that's good value. Diablo did something for once. Uh, fall fall rack in the front, uh, looking to try to disengage this team fight. A beautiful condemn after the Ring of Frost Blizzard Wombo combo. Two members down. Divine Palm saving the one member that was gonna fall on the blue team. And with Flexpro going forward by himself, this is tragic. Oh, the globe getting the max value. Somehow trading somewhat two for four at the end of the day. And Murky was one of the four. So really, you know, I'm kind of impressed. Blue team, they, they made it. They made it look really good at the start, especially with the condemn after the Jaina Ring of Frost uh, Blizzard. Uh, but if Zombie dies here, then all his nice little globe that actually did something for once isn't really gonna matter because he's now dead hmm. Hmm. hmm that's the sound I make when I decide I want to drink coffee the cat left yes I know it's tragic it's sad and we're all very upset but Wu-Tang Clan says it's time to start pushing, pushing, not pushing, pushing down this bottom lane wailing away at the tower it's time for the esports to commence. Jaina says, you know what? I'm going to protect my structures. I, I fight for my friends. So that's what Ike says. What does she say? You'll receive no sympathy from me? I don't even know. Um, hello. Uh, Wu-Tang Clan Augustus. They've taken out the wall. It's enough XP to, to put them at level 19. And they're going to say, you know what? Job done. Let's leave. Uh, Darth Cadis. Fighting crazy eyes, the sparkle, sparkle, haunting wave is enough for him to escape the clutches of Murky. But they're about to lose the bottom shrine. Murky has claimed this one. Augustus shoots a sentinel out just to reveal that, you know, that no one is there at the moment. And Flex Pro is just going in alone. Now, Pufferfish is on cooldown. So a wombo combo from, or, or just, just a, an octograph combo. Not available at this moment, so he's safe to be doing this. Um, but he did still take a fair amount of damage. I believe Murky used Envenom in that scenario. Yeah, so Envenom's on cooldown for a full minute. Now has Octograb ready. Oh, Diablo uh, lost his life. Diablo is sitting at a, a total, a grand total of six deaths so far in this game. All right, eSports. And, whoa, the combo from Kerrigan. Lunar Fleur connects this time, and they will blow up Kerrigan, but not before he casts Divine Palm. But the damage follow-up afterwards. Flexbro going for Jaina, which is a nice attempt, but they just don't have the same kind of damage after that. Once the Divine Palm was successful, it became very risky. Level 20 talents happened to reach, and we see the Indestructible there on Johanna. Oh, but the uh, explosion there from the... Bomb was enough to shred through the rest of the health there. Globe of Annihilation getting some value, even though it's not all that strong. It's not really all that farmed up. Uh, we do see Lunar Flare trying to peel against Crazy Eyes. Crazy Eyes loses his life. Globe of Annihilation being cast again. All right, right now, Globe of Annihilation should be at around 350, 400 damage for a, an average player. But it's at 92. And that's just because he's been throwing it... Like, like early, like that was early. You want to auto attack like those three back minions maybe once. The front line's already taking damage from the minion wave. So just like, throw a few auto attacks and then throw the globe out. Like there's just a small, a few small transitions you can make this point in the game where your globe will get way more value. And that, like, you still miss the egg. You have been trying so hard to hit this egg and you just can't do it. Stop. I, I I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Taronda is dead for a full minute. Oh, did he hit the egg? Oh, he did it! He did it! Go, little dude! You... No! Oh, man, he tried so hard. Oh, eSports. All right, it's all worth it. You did it, Asmodan. Now kill Murky. Kill Murky! You guys can do it! 
Oh, he is the ultimate Asmodean player. He has done it. He has proven us all wrong. Wu-Tang Clan in the front. No heals for quite a while. That was a strange interaction. He dove and hit nothing because Radiant Dash is eSports. All right. Well, Jaina has ball. Wu-Tang Clan is going to lose his life here. Does he have souls? No. So Diablo is just going to be a lizard corpse for the next little while. Lunara has been pushing down this bottom lane. Looking at our Lunara's build, ultimately he went for boundless stride. All leaping strike charges returned every 20 seconds. So that means instead of it being 20 seconds per charge, you get both back in 20 seconds. You can use it on minions. You can use it on minions. You can use it on minions. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. You stupid Bambi. You deserve to die in that weird, awkward shape. Uh, you can use this on allies. So she could have used that on the minion to leap away. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have mattered, I guess, but it would have looked cool. I'm, I'm just sad. You got the level 20 talent. Use it. Use it. All right. Luna Flare getting whipped entirely. Flexbro needs those fat heals. Shadowstalk has already been used, and Flexbro decides to go back in. You know, yeah, yeah I almost got away. Let's, let's, let's just go die. It's a, it's, it's a cool way to do it. Esports, boys. Yeah, this Tyrande is working overtime to try to keep me alive, but I'm, I just want to die. Hello? This is Master League, guys. Uh, Wailing Arrow hitting zero targets. Nicely done. And... and even Diablo. Even Diablo is calling you out, Kerrigan. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Haunting Wave trying to escape, but the Octograph without a Pufferfish goes down, but the Shark is enough. Wu-Tang Clan entering the fray, but I don't know if it matters. This game is 22.5 kills to 27 kills, so in the end, it's actually quite even when it comes to the brawling, but level 21 to 22 in favor of the blue team. Almost, almost no actual pushing has happened. This has been just disorganized brawling left and right. Full esports. This is how the game is meant to be played. And Lunara is diving in and takes way too much damage. This is why we usually don't go leaping strike. She she just kind of dove in, used her heroic, and then got, got tickled by some minions, and she was basically dead. Yeah, Glow of Annihilation was used as well. Oh, there she goes again. Oh, I'm just gonna have to retreat from here. Hit just stand in the apocalypse. Some nice esports action and the retreat with Shadowstalk. Both of the shrines being controlled by the blue team. Uh, a lot of damage being thrown out there from Jaina, but Kerrigan is about to re enter the fray. Murky getting that split push takes out a fort at this moment. And now Kerrigan is here. Flex Bro looking to try to flank, but you know, just kind of walking directly into Johanna, getting hit by a nice little smite and then a condemn. Indestructible has been popped. Flex Bro diving forward with Ravage while activating the Maelstrom. And the explosion from Murky enough to blow up Augustus here. One more slime that'll do it three members have fallen and the blue team will finally pick themselves up a dragon to maybe maybe get some push done uh, for the first time in in, the, in 20 minutes um, a total of of one fort has two forts have fallen in this game we, we might see this bottom fort fall eventually this one you know asmodin has valiantly globe of annihilation did as many times as they possibly could uh but cat, what are you doing the cat is so weird uh <laughs> You don't want to know. You don't want to know. The dragon standing up here at a nice position, starting to punt this away. All right, bottom fort does go down, left and contested to the minions, but Murky is getting his split push up top. So the blue team starting to push ahead even further in XP, especially as these crucial structures start to collapse. Uh, three forts down on the red side. Blue team starting to wail away at the towers. 1,300 XP if you manage to remove both of them. Darth Cadis gets punted away by the Dragon Knight. And uh, yeah, this is just gonna be a lot of experience picked up here. They're making the mid lane vulnerable. That sets them up for a position if they win a late game team, but convincingly, they could opt to try to just push down the middle lane all as five and maybe attempt to end the game. Murky also has made the top lane vulnerable. That is the Bridge of Death though. Wailing connecting just on Johanna. Uh, you know, just in general, I see Sylvanas players use Wailing as like, initiations when the team isn't ready to initiate and it, it always just like it feels bad it's a long cooldown it didn't really do anything it doesn't really do a lot of damage it's something you do when the enemy team dives on you and then you silence them and then you kill them but it's it's really hard to initiate uh with it alone like that all right shadow stock at level 20 talents picked up so that's why you see them all running around so quickly but it's not enough to juke the murky explosion there 
killing Sylvanas, and Murky has fallen, but he, again, is not really all that crucial. Ice Block is getting max value this game, keeping Faken alive, and Shadow Charge will not be able to reach Lunar Flare, not connecting either. The Blizzard right now, Radiant Dash into the backside, and Augustus is going to end up losing his life. We see the indestructible on Johanna, the one member that looked like she might fall on the blue side, and yes, she will go down as she stayed a little bit too long. The flip there from Wu-Tang picks up the kill. Murky being obnoxious, throwing down that, <laughs> juking the globe of annihilation, and Murky will end up falling once more. Somehow they managed to survive with Asmodan and Diablo, trading out Lunara, Johanna, and a Murky. Murky just barely not catching Diablo as he hearths back to base, and Zombie's just gonna hearth in the middle of the map. No biggie. Oh yeah, okay, what's next, what's next, what's next? Diablo, gonna get some uh, some giants here. Murky's looking at, scouting this out, saying, mm, can, I, can, I, can I do this? Mm, yeah, I can do it. Oh, just gonna pace around. And yeah, there we go. Perfect timing. Esports going in there. Gonna throw down another perfect fish the moment it is available. Cast it. Cast it. It's ready. There you go. It's not ready. I lied. He's gonna die. And then <laughs> I'll, I'll sort of steal it. Steal it. I'll sort of steal it. Steal it. Steal it. Yeah. Esports. Donation, mercenary camp. Murky just says, you know what? I want to let the red team get back into this. Let's give them a mercenary camp. Egg has been moved for the first time in this game, realizing this fort is a little bit exposed, so we move the egg into this bush. Uh, all right, Asmo, getting the idea. He's starting to clean up the minions. He has 208 bonus damage. That's actually like, you know, that hurt. that would actually hurt. Shadow charge once again. No follow up with the overpower from Diablo. So the, the Lunara will just prance away. She would have had the Leaping Strike to get out of that scenario. She probably would have been fine since I don't know if uh, the Sentinel would have, or the, the Lunar Flare would have been on time, considering Tyrande didn't go uh, for the extended range. All right, the Globe there connecting, uh, pushing out this bottom lane as well. Mercenary Camp here on the top. This is something they have to be worried about. Lunara and Murky have, have got complete control of the top lane. This wall is completely been knocked down, and they really should be sending a single member back here to try to take care of it. As we see Kerrigan diving forward, faking, getting back, the Ravage will pick up the kill, and Fall Rock will end up falling as well, but they need to insta hearth. They need, okay, yes, Darth Cadus realizes this, he's going back, so they pick up three kills. Absolutely huge, but they're going to lose this top keep. Now, we... Savannah is phenomenal for pushing this back. She can push this back on her own, but she needs to be very worried about the Octo Grab uh, Pufferfish combos that Crazy Eyes is going to attempt to throw at him. Oh, just say no. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna split push. They, they're just. They're just base racing. This is. They, they canceled the hearth because of. Uh, they, they know the situation. Diablo doesn't know what to do. Diablo's like, I'm not gonna get a Dragon Knight. A Dragon Knight. A Dragon Knight. I'm gonna get a. Nope. No, I didn't want to do that. Diablo, you are killing your team. The base race is is in favor of the blue team right now, but they're backing up. The minion spawned, and their core is going down. <laughs> oh, e sports, G G. Red team is victorious. Nice. That was episode number 27 of the Daily Quest, EduCast. We saw two excitable games, and we saw a lot of things done right and a lot of things done wrong in those games. So that is the, the best part of Daily Quest and EduCast in general, as we can, we can uh, give everyone a lot of good advice and have fun in the process. Uh, edu-casting all of these games. Now, whew, well, we saw some pretty consistent Lunara builds. Um, Leaping Strike is uh, didn't really ever look like it did a lot in terms of, of damage. It, it put Lunara in a few um, risky spots. It allowed her to chase a few times, and it's very fun to watch but ultimately, I still think it is definitely a little bit too risky for the hero based on her kit. Um, 
But, you know, the Lunara did decent damage in that game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she did 65. What? Johanna had the highest damage on the team? That was such a weird game. Um, look at the damage. Anyways, uh, yeah, so that is going to be the final Lunara video for the week and the final daily quest for the week. This has been Lunara launch week. We did a first impressions video, and then we did a video uh, explaining what we expect to be the most competitive build that's currently being run by one of the top assassin players, ranged assassin players globally, Arthalon, formerly Temple Storm, formerly Bob Ross Fan Club, and supposedly future Cloud9. Um... And uh, we take we took a look at a replay of that, so I highly encourage you to check that out if you have not seen that just yet. Next week, we will have a whole nother array of shows. I am considering doing a speculative episode on Greyman, considering he has been completely data mined. But if you guys have a specific topic, a specific hero that you would like to see covered, please let me know. You can shoot me an email at solidjakegg at gmail.com to either submit a replay of your own that we'd like to see educasted or uh, to request a topic for a future episode. That does it for episode number 27 of The Daily Quest. Feel free and please do subscribe and follow my Twitch and YouTube and Twitter and all of the social media channels. And thank you so much for watching. GG.